No upset! That's what I'm here for. Can't tolerate upset in my life. Mission 7, the target's second son. Second son. Is that the one that Anya decked? <laughs> Makes a killer breakfast. Did he give himself the one that he messed the ketchup on? Ketchup up on? Who gets the messed up ketchup one? This is a very telling personality sign. Not Anya. That's good. He gave it to himself. He's a real man. The sacrifice symbol in the eggs. It's for the mission, but it's really for, for our family, our wonderful family. I mean, if his framing it in terms of it being for the mission means he treats Anya like best dad, then no upset. What do you do exactly, Yor? Was she just like testing there a little bit? She seemed like she was looking for a reaction. I'll be going to work now. Work that you've never once inquired about. Aren't you curious what I do for a living, Lloyd? It's Bestie Becky, <laughs> aka Miss Rich Girl. Yes, I do. What are you, a pleb? You take it down a notch, crab. They're gonna be friends, though. They're gonna be friends. <laughs> he was worried, so he came to check on her from the roof. No, Lloyd. <laughs> well, they never know in Spike's family. They're all just kids, you know. They're all just vehicles for their, their parents' behaviors, beliefs. Oh no, she can read all this. Oh no. School's bad enough without reading minds. Oh no. Anya, stay above it. Thank you, Becky. Becky's got a heart of gold. Becky coming in clutch. It's definitely made an impression. Yeah, exactly. I sort of liked it, though. <laughs> I feel like as a kid, the lines are even more blurred between love and hate. It's that classic thing of kids hitting their crush, you know? Maybe a big part of it is just wanting attention and not knowing how to get it. Which is not limited to kids. All adults just being big, older children. Not knowing how to ask for what you want, or maybe even not even knowing yourself what you want and letting that manifest in very odd ways that are not constructive. If Damien thinks of himself as this great, powerful kid that's untouchable, well, he's just been touched, so that's a clue for him that Anya is significant. Math class. Oh my, what math are they doing? They're, they're four, six, whatever. <laughs> Respect. Even the teacher. There he is. That's Lloyd, right? <laughs> Not at all a, a disguise. You just did. Alright, this is more my speed. <laughs> Mirrors and light. Yes, I like this. Instead of advanced algebraic geometry. <laughs> Did he manufacture this whole book? Just to slip it to Anya? Yeah, this is more my speed. Lunch. Instead of advanced algebraic geometry. Wow, this- Wow, this school! They have a menu! Becky's going down. I'm gonna sabotage Becky for the mission. No, 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 Becky's the best thing for Anya. He actually got a job there for a minute. And Becky was never seen again. It's for world peace. An indignant apology. Oh, he's scared. Is he gonna apologize? That would be really big. <laughs> Wouldn't be kid insult without your mama. Hey, that one cut the deepest for some reason. <laughs> Damien, anytime you want to speak would be great. <laughs> Blown away by flower power. No, no. Come on, Damien. It would make me really happy if Damien ended up being a cool kid. Just because it would be way more satisfying than falling into, like, the snooty rich kid thing. And I have a feeling that that's where this is going. That's exciting. Come on, Damien. Come on, Damien. Deep into my eyes, huh? 
<laughs> this is beating heart. I know you're only six, but do something big, Damien. Oh no, Damien, no, why? Damien, why? At least it comes out in a very sort of honest way. Battle outcome. <laughs> Anya wins, I guess. These are kids, I don't know, you gotta sort of let it go a little bit. You're, you're not, I don't know. No, no, you don't understand. See the bigger picture, Lloyd. Read the tea leaves. They're bonded now. They're connected. I can't believe they're doing this in first grade or whatever. It's gotta be grades, right? It's gotta be Stella's. <gasps> You've crossed the line. You've gone too far. It's a lot, yeah, a lot to take in. Where did I put the wine? It's a very, very your metaphor. <laughs> Focus, you're... <laughs> Poor Anya. But actually, what he wants and what Anya wants are not at odds at all. It's just too short-sighted. If Anya's life is just a living hell, then not only is that terrible just on its face, because it's Anya, but how's she gonna be high-performing if she's miserable every day? Those two things don't typically go together. I feel like there's so much you can add to relationships just by giving the other person the feeling that they're secure, you know? If people know they're secure in what they need, you can take all sorts of risks. You can push in all sorts of weird directions. Anya's got it real bad. I mean, school is already school. Kids are terrible. But also, she's responsible in her mind for world peace. And if she doesn't achieve that, then her parents won't love her or take care of her. And and she can read everyone's minds as they're thinking about these things. All she wants to do is make people feel happy so she feels like she's loved and won't be discarded. But the way people are thinking, she's only as important or as useful as things that are not in her direct control. We've seen Anya crush it. You know, she's worked really hard on things because she was having fun and she thought that it was what made Lloyd and you're happy. So there's a potential for a real dark element from Lloyd, even though I, I know he'll land on the right side. I know that's where his heart actually is. It's also understandable why he has that, that focus, because there's just, there's so much at stake for him. There's not a lot of room to be free thinking enough to see the big picture. It's like every moment is critical. But with a lot of things, I feel the path becomes a little more clear if you zoom out. You treat Anya well, you make sure she feels good and feels secure and knows she's loved, at least in some capacity, and then you break down problems one by one, and you take it gradually. You know, you don't make your entire existence or someone else's entire existence about one day, you know, one moment or one exam or whatever the case may be, because it's just not, you know, it never is. And by throwing away the bigger picture and perhaps like a better process for victory in each given moment or day, you end up in many cases not having anything. It's just you've demolished something of beauty piece by piece in the hopes of getting something that never came and, and maybe never could come because of the way you handled the, the structure from the ground up. Yeah, so would I. Yours got it right. Yeah, yeah, this is really refreshing about Lloyd, that he can take stock, he can listen. Yeah, yeah, and again, that's understandable. It's also a mistake just in general. I don't even need to speak about kids, just knowing about people. You don't want to make someone else responsible for your success, you know, that just ends up being all sorts of weird. And that's a recipe for resentment because you aren't valuing the other person, you're seeing them as a vehicle for your desires. And those desires are often based on weakness. It's like things you feel you can't do on your own. And so you're putting your entire responsibility and the burden of your own life on someone else who is probably just there loving you, you know, and is just a victim in that. And then the other person knows that, you know, they feel, at least on some level, even if they're not fully conscious of it, that you're not seeing them and you're not valuing them for what they want and who they are, but rather, at least in some small way, as kind of a tool for your own gratification. And no one likes to feel that way. Ooh, she's not going out for hot cocoa. Try peanuts. Should probably check on her. Should probably really appreciate that. Still holding the pencil. That's sad. Aww. Oh no! That's heartbreaking. Happier days. We were so optimistic. It's okay. We hit a difficulty. We can work through it as a family. <laughs> as an older sibling, I, I connect to this feeling. There's this weird <laughs> feeling of like awe and admiration and a little bit of fear too. When you realize ways in which your younger sibling is surpassing you. There are a lot of ways in which my younger sister has been way ahead of me from like birth, <laughs> it seems. <laughs> it's great and awful at the same time, but mostly great. Yeah. It's gonna be so key for Anya, because she's so just looking to be loved. 
Yeah, she would love that. It would be the world to her. Yeah, I mean, just at the very least, praise her for the things that she does really well, you know? Does a good thing, praise her. A little late for that. Yeah, exactly. Take some responsibility, my friend. Don't say it's for the mission. Alright. <laughs> he's been a great father, all in all. And his, I mean, what makes him great is partly his ability to reflect. You know, he's not going to be perfect out of the gate. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're, your benchmark is not making mistakes, then you're always going to fail. But your benchmark should just be having a guiding star, keeping on course. Why is this making me sad? Right, long-term thinking. Zoom out. And I guess, father? I'm, like, geared to expect her to have run away. Just from shows where parents knock on doors with no answer. Oh, it's way more heartbreaking. She's just crying. Or sleeping. Oh, she's studying. Aw. Oh, no. She just wants to make dad happy. If that doesn't melt your heart, Lloyd. Then it's going to melt his heart. <laughs> Had that thought occurred to Mama? I mean, you're going to find out. You're already finding out. There was a little bit of upset in that episode. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it's made really amazing and heartwarming by the fact that Anya's just such a great kid. She's just such a good kid that wants something so simple that they're able to provide an abundance if they just keep the right focus. She just wants people to love her. She just wants to know that what she has is safe, you know? I get it. And she's the kind of kid that just takes everything on her shoulders as being about her. And that creates a lot of responsibility for Lloyd and Yor, making sure that they bear some of that load for her. You know, that's too much. I think in general, one of the things that creates sort of a, a cycle or like a pattern of anxious thought is not having a direct or recognizable link between things you're doing and positive reward of some kind. You know, if, if reactions are sort of random or are not based on what you're putting forth, but is more about the desires of other people or the expectations of others or their own personal complexes or whatever that are being supplanted into you, the way that gets internalized is something like, I'm in danger because even if I do these good things, even if I try to read the signs and give people what they want, it's unknown if that will be a good thing for me. It's unknown if I will be taken care of. So there's like a, a trust lost on some fundamental level where you've been kind of conditioned to expect negative things to happen at any time. On the other hand, if Anya does things that are actually good for the family or, or the parents feel are good for her and immediately there's a feeling like, oh, I, I did this right and uh, this is good for me. I am loved. There is a way I can act or operate so that I can feel safe or get the things that I want. You can kind of breathe a little bit and you now have a structure for life and structure, if it's done well, has, has a way of providing comfort. You know, it's something you can lean on because the world is so chaotic you got to believe in something so it's nice to have certain fundamental things you you know to be solid in your life so just to take an extreme if, if they weren't actually good parents if Anya was doing all this and working this hard and Lloyd was just constantly coming down on her maybe if he wasn't Lloyd and wasn't a spy and had some kind of emotional problem and took it out on her what she would learn as a kid is that people just come down on you randomly even when I do things well bad things happen so there's a problem even if it's not fully conscious that's sort of the schema from which you might learn to operate and I think it would be exacerbated by the fact that she actually is really great and actually is doing so much you know and also really desires it strongly you know, desires that kind of love and the knowledge that she won't be discarded like she seems to have been before so that's what creates this rawness for me and what makes it just a huge relief that they kind of catch themselves there at the end of the episode because i feel like that would actually make them unlikable you know if they didn't have that if they were leaning too heavily on the mission thing and anya wasn't getting the support she needed it would it would kind of be unforgivable if it were long term you know if it didn't exist just in moments so yeah this episode felt different in tone from a lot of the other ones actually it feels like we're getting some family drama now some actual tension that exists in family i blame children Thank you.